The AstraZeneca vaccine likely causes, in very rare instances, a serious side effect called thrombotic thrombocytopenia, which leads to blood clots or thrombosis, particularly in the cerebral sinus vein. This is the headline, or the medicalese version of it, that has caused consternation among the public and scientists alike. In this video we're going to summarize how they came to discover this very rare side effect, put the risk in perspective for you, and explain how we should be thinking about risks and benefits when taking any medicine. The too long didn't watch conclusion is this. The AstraZeneca vaccine very effectively prevents blood clots by preventing COVID. It also prevents severe COVID and death. Unfortunately, it does seem to cause a blood clotting disorder in extremely rare cases. Paradoxically though, you should be reassured to hear this because it means that the safety checks are working exactly as planned. All of medicine is about balancing benefits and risks. This applies to any and every treatment. With the AstraZeneca vaccine, the benefits vastly outweigh the risk for most people. Now I'm going to start with some background because it's important to help you understand the big picture. But make sure you watch to the end for the good stuff on the benefit risk analysis. Starting with a recap on the overall safety and efficacy of the AstraZeneca vaccine. In the first published results involving over 24,000 participants, the AstraZeneca vaccine proved 65 to 80% effective in preventing symptomatic COVID and 100% effective in preventing severe cases requiring hospitalization. Importantly, no serious safety issues surfaced. In the most recent study involving an additional 32,000 participants across 88 trial centers in the US, Peru, and Chile, the overall efficacy was 76%. It was again 100% effective at preventing severe disease and hospitalization, with a grand total of zero serious safety events identified. The analysts and the Data Safety Monitoring Board specifically studied the data for any signs of blood clots and found none. Overall, over 34,000 people received the AstraZeneca vaccine in these randomized controlled trials. RCTs are the best way to test for adverse events because their design avoids many forms of bias that plague observational studies. What is a randomized controlled trial? It's where you take a group of people and randomly assign them to receive either the trial vaccine or a placebo, and then measure the differences in outcomes between the groups. These outcomes could include death, symptomatic disease, or side effects. Randomization ensures that there is no difference between the participant groups, except for whether they received the vaccine or the placebo. Then, if a certain bad health event arises more frequently in the vaccine group, you could more confidently conclude that the vaccine caused it. But one limitation with even these extremely large RCTs is that they can't detect very rare side effects. This should make sense. If you give 30,000 people the vaccine, you wouldn't expect to see a side effect that only occurs in 1 in 300,000 people. And even if you did happen to see one single case of the side effect, you wouldn't have enough statistical power to conclude that the side effect was caused by the vaccine and not simply chance occurrence. Bad health events like blood clots occur naturally in the population. This is crucial to remember when discussing the newly identified rare side effect. It does not mean that the vaccine was rushed to the market. The newly identified side effect is so rare that it would have been impossible to pinpoint before it entered widespread use in millions of people. Now, every vaccine and drug, when it enters real world use, continues to be monitored by what's called post-marketing surveillance. This is to check for any rare or long-term safety issues but it's much trickier to detect rare side effects outside carefully controlled clinical trials because it's considerably harder to prove causal links. Basically, what the safety surveillance experts have to do is compare the expected number of cases with the observed number of rare side effects. Whenever there's a discrepancy, it's investigated further to see if there's a plausible causal link. With the AstraZeneca vaccine, safety monitoring experts in Europe observed a handful more cases than expected of a particular rare type of blood clot among those recently vaccinated. This led to a thorough investigation. Three research groups have published early work on a possible mechanism, which they dubbed vaccine-induced immune thrombotic thrombocytopenia. It seems to be an autoimmune reaction similar to that seen rarely with a common hospital drug called heparin. Basically, something about the AstraZeneca vaccine, in very rare instances, triggers the body to produce antibodies against its own platelets, somehow causing these platelets to clump together to form blood clots. This progression is important to keep in mind. The AstraZeneca vaccine does not cause run-of-the-mill clots like we see in patients who are taking the birth control pill or who have had recent surgery. These clots most commonly occur in the lower limbs. 
By contrast, these vaccine-induced clots occur from this weird syndrome of clot-happy blood with low platelets. And mysteriously, the clots prefer unusual locations, particularly the splanchnic vein and the cerebral vein. Clots in that latter location, known as cerebral venous thromboses, are very concerning because they can cause a stroke and sometimes death. But the overall risk of the AstraZeneca-induced cerebral venous thrombosis remains low. It's currently estimated to occur in about 5 to 10 in a million people. That's so extremely rare, it's hard to even imagine. This is what 1 in 1,000 looks like. This is what 1 in 10,000 looks like. 1 in 100,000 is 10 times rarer than that. Let's put this in perspective, starting with a disease that's far more common than many realize. The risk of blood clots for women on their oral contraceptive pill. There are about 1,000 blood clots every year for every million women on the pill. Put it another way, if you're taking the pill for a year, you have 1 in 1,000 chance of getting a blood clot. And that's generally considered an uncommon side effect. To reassure you, most of these blood clots are not serious, unlike the much rarer subtype in the cerebral vein, though they still require treatment. And this illustrates again the principle of balancing risks and benefits. For millions of women on the pill, they judge that the benefits outweigh this comparatively low risk of blood clots. Now for something that's almost proverbial for how rare it is. The risk of getting struck by lightning is about two in a million per year. Now how about the background risk of CVT itself? Every year in the general population, at least 15 CVTs occur per million people, with many going undiagnosed. It's so, so rare, you probably never even heard of it before all this bad press about the AstraZeneca vaccine. It's so rare, most doctors never see it in their entire career. And even still, it's higher than the risk of getting a clot from the AstraZeneca vaccine. So that hopefully puts the numbers in perspective. This is an extremely rare side effect. Even so, there's a fundamental principle in medicine. Hippocrates, writing millennia ago in a book appropriately titled Epidemics, advises, make a habit of two things, to help or at least to do no harm. Physicians care deeply about avoiding unnecessary harm to our patients. Yet, sadly, very few if any of our treatments are 100% harm-free. The question we need to be asking about any drug or vaccine is whether the benefits outweigh the potential harms. We can do a crude benefit-risk analysis by looking at the risk of death from COVID. It has often been pointed out that young people are at a very low risk of death from the SARS coronavirus infection, unlike older people. Here's data I presented from a previous video, which showed that the risk of death in those younger than 35 was 0.004%. That's four deaths in every 100,000 young adults infected. So even as a young person at the lowest risk, you are an order of magnitude more likely to die of COVID than to get a blood clot from the AstraZeneca vaccine. Statisticians at the University of Cambridge have devised a much more sophisticated benefit-risk analysis. Imagine 100,000 people in a place where COVID control was medium well done, equating to about 60 of them getting sick per day. Now let's vaccinate all of them with the AstraZeneca vaccine. What would we gain and what would it cost? For ease, the statisticians picked one single benefit of the vaccine, ICU admissions prevented. That's comparable to the serious harm of cerebral venous thromboses. Then they said if we only look at the benefits in the near term, a mere 16 weeks, how many ICU admissions in those 16 weeks would we avoid by vaccinating all 100,000? For the 20 to 29 age group, we would avoid two. For the 60 to 69, we'd avoid 40. Now, how many of these blood clots would we cause by vaccinating all 100,000? Here, the analysts drew on early data which suggests that the risk of clots is higher in younger people. The vaccine would cause up to one clot in the young group and close to zero blood clots in the old. As you can clearly see, the benefit-risk ratio is small but still favorable in those 20 to 29, and it becomes massively favorable by the time you consider those aged 50 and above. The benefit-risk ratio becomes even more favorable when you remember this. A vaccinated person will keep accruing this benefit over the lifetime of the vaccine's protection, not merely the 16 weeks chosen for this analysis. By contrast, the risk from vaccination only occurs at the point of vaccination. This means that over time, the benefits will increase, but the risks will not. It's also important to remember that the benefits being illustrated are only ICU admissions prevented. There are many, many other benefits to the vaccine. For every one person being saved from ICU, 
there are many, many more who would be saved from hospitalization and long COVID. Vaccines also help prevent you from spreading the virus to others and will allow our societies to finally reopen more fully and get away from the horrible social costs of physical distancing. Consider just this one added benefit. COVID-19 itself causes blood clots, including cerebral venous thrombosis, at a rate far higher than the AstraZeneca vaccine. So by preventing COVID, the vaccine actually reduces your overall risk of blood clots. About 18% of people hospitalized with COVID get a blood clot in one of their veins. Looking specifically at the cerebral venous thromboses, about 39 in a million get one from COVID. So in the long run, the AstraZeneca vaccine will actually prevent more CVTs than it causes. Once again, physicians care deeply about not causing harm to our patients. We have to balance the real but extremely rare potential harm from the AstraZeneca vaccine against the certain and multitudinous dangers of COVID-19. For most people, especially those in the latter decades of life, the benefits of the AstraZeneca vaccine vastly outweigh the risks. What I do hope is abundantly clear from this video is how deeply physicians and medical researchers care about ensuring the safety of the COVID vaccines. COVID is a brutal, brutal disease, and we want to prevent and eradicate it as best we can while causing as little harm as possible researchers are going to extraordinary lengths to pinpoint the rarest of side effects to the COVID vaccines. And the safety monitoring is working exactly as designed. Vaccines remain our best hope to keep ourselves safe and to end this pandemic. Please do get vaccinated with whatever vaccine is available to you in your area. That's all for now. Thank you so much for watching. If this video was helpful and informative, please give us a thumbs up and leave us a comment down below. But if you did not find this video helpful or entertaining, Try setting the playback speed to 75%. And please do subscribe to our channel so we can see you next time.